for the most part, gone. Sometimes you'll have to speak louder to them. Time has taken and is taking its toll on them. Their ranks grow thinner each day. They probably appear to you like any ordinary old people, mostly retirees, now sitting on porch swings or in rocking chairs or wandering around malls. They're ordinary parents and grandparents in all respects except one. When they were young, they saved the world. No other generation in the history of the world can make that claim. Not the founders of the American Revolution, not the ancient Greeks or the Romans, not the baby <coughs> boomers, not even the early Christians. Granted, other generations have had great struggles and other times have faced very daunting challenges. But at best there were here and there saviors only of a town or of a country, vanguards of unfulfilled promises, dreamers of visions. America's World War II generation did not as a group achieve the heroism of Joan of Arc, nor is there any evidence their souls were touched by fire as the American Civil War experience was described by Oliver Wendell Holmes. But who would deny that the actions of that generation had a much more profound effect on the world? Yet isn't it ironically fitting that victory in the most intense, deadly, and important struggle in human history should seem sort of ordinary to those who won it and those who benefited the most from it? You see, America's World War II generation saved the world not for glory or for honor, nor for lasting tribute on the printed page, but simply because it had to be done. No one else was available to do it. It isn't that the British or the French or the Russians or any <coughs> other freedom-loving peoples of the world didn't contribute mightily. They did. They suffered unutterably severe hardship, death, and destruction. And that is precisely the point. With most of Europe in chains, Asia teetering on the edge of collapse, the Pacific in flames, and the incredibly brave British hanging on by their fingernails, it fell to the Americans to save the world from the unspeakable horror of global domination. And who were these valiant warriors who secured the blessings of freedom and liberty in those dark days? Supermen? Millions of Davids or King Richards or equally well-known historical figures? Hardly. Certainly that war had its share of legends, but legends don't win wars. Men and women would win wars. Ordinary people, like your brother, your uncle, your cousins, people like your Uncle Roy, or maybe even your mother and father. We need to say, we need to take a long, loving look at these people now while we have the chance. If you know any, give them a hug and say thanks. No individuals or group have ever matched their achievements. God willing, no one will ever have to again. And I think that says it all, doesn't it? Let's give them a big hand. If you'd like a copy of these, what I'd like to in the Philippines at the time of Pearl Harbor, and the day after Pearl Harbor, um, the Japanese invaded all the small islands in the Pacific. He was taken prisoner, fought, was in the Bataan Death March, survived the Death March, but then was on the first prison ship that was sent to Japan. He became a slave laborer for the next 39 months. While he was there, he secretly made the flag that you see on the wall. It uh, took him three years to make it. He made it out of bits and pieces of anything that he could steal at a time, brought it back to where he was in. I guess he's not incarcerated, but where he was a prisoner. Managed to hide the flag under the wall boards, floor boards, any place that he can without being caught. If he'd been caught with it, he would have been executed. Um, we don't know an awful lot about the making of it. People of the BFW have helped restore this flag, and they've tried to be in touch with survivors of the Bataan Death March, but nobody has come up with that. <coughs> the flag is much bigger than anyone would ever thought. The day he was liberated. He ran outside and held up a flag for the incoming flyers to serve. Um, came home from the war, put the flag away, never talked about the war, and really didn't show the flag to anybody. He was in there almost eight years. He was, if he was at the VFW at different times, he would talk about the making of his flag. So it was sort of like everyone knew he made a flag, but no one ever asked him what happened to it. Um, Miller died in 1978, and I think um, probably about 15 years ago, the VFW wanted to honor him, so they went to his wife and they asked her, whatever happened to the flag, we know we made one, but no one ever knew what happened to it. And she went up 
you stand up to hold that picture real quick? Just hold, you're about a big guy, right? Yeah. 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 Whoops. It says the Orsini flag. Oh, whoops. That. <laughs> um, she brought down this. It was a piece. It looked like a piece of dried up old oil cloth that had been in an outside shed for fifty or sixty years. You couldn't flake it without. You couldn't touch it without it flaking. It was sent to the Smithsonian. The Smithsonian didn't um, didn't feel they could do anything with it at that time. They wanted to um, keep it. They would have liked to have worked on it, but the family wanted it closer to home. And this flag does belong to the Orsini family. The Smithsonian recommended a place in Massachusetts, the Williamstown Art Conservation Center, where they restore famous masterpieces. Um, they sent it there. The, the Institute felt that they could restore it, but they'd have to have it for about a year. And these are just some of the stages of the unfurling. Most of the time, it was in a humidity chamber. The flag they feel was made from a Japanese window shade, which he might have gotten out of the trash complex. The red and white stripes are common oil-based paint, which he would have come in contact with as a slave laborer. The field of blue is interesting. That's uniform dyer blueing. They know that one of his jobs was laundering Japanese uniforms. And of course, I've seen so many John Wayne movies that I always think of Japanese uniforms as being tan or khaki, but not the naval uniforms that would have been blue. We don't know a lot more about the flag, but I just know that when people come in, they're so inspired by this man who survived under the worst of circumstances, but never gave up on this country. This is the Orsini flag. And I wanted to tell you that. I hope you'll get up and walk, walk around, visit with the guests more. I know your boss is going to be here pretty soon, and I hope you'll enjoy it.